why is Israel attacking Gaza? Well, I think it comes down to one main thing. After Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005 and said to the Palestinians, look, this is your opportunity. We've pulled out our settlements. We've pulled out our troops. Have a go at it. Try and create an entity which may well lead to a state. Do what you need. Americans gave money. The Europeans gave money. And the way it looks, Hamas funneled that money towards the creation of, a, in essence, a terror war machine. When we know, and you know, that Gazans could do with a lot more. Education, better health, a future. And that didn't happen. And instead, those rockets came to us. And Israel, Christmas Day, decided 70, 80 rockets in a day on towns and on civilians, enough. No country lives under this. There's a lot of talk that Israel's response, though, has been disproportionate. The, the amount of Israelis that have died in these rocket attacks compared to the amount of, of Palestinians, up to close to 600 now. What is the feeling of the Israeli in the street? I think, uh, as far as I understand, 80, 90, 80 to 90 percent of Israelis are in support of this campaign. And uh, proportionality, as you say, it's an important issue. But let's look at it from, a, from an Israeli point of view. The world demands proportionality. What would that mean? If they're firing rockets at our kindergartens and synagogues and so on, should we be passing rockets to our civilians and saying, go for it, my friend, fire back randomly at any civilian place you want in Gaza? That would be proportional, and we're not willing to do that. In fact, Israel has emphasized that while civilians may be caught up in this in Palestine or in Palestinian territories, we regret that, and we wish Hamas wouldn't fire their rockets from civilian areas. But our aim is not Palestinians. Our aim is Hamas. Palestinians and Hamas are not the same thing necessarily. And yet women and children are dying, lots of them. And those images are being broadcast out to the world. Right. The images are not easy. And I would say that every Israeli and the government has said it as well. We're not interested in killing civilians and we regret every loss of life on our side and on the Palestinian side. And we don't like those pictures either. But the question has to be asked. For example, about the school that Israel um, sent a tank show near to or into yesterday. The facts are still up for uh, bargaining, apparently. Why were Hamas militants, Hamas terrorists, hiding in that school? Why did they fire mortar shells and other weapons from that school or beside that school towards um, the Israeli army? when they knew full well that the Israelis would respond as we do to the source of the fire. And uh, the results we've seen, unfortunately. The, the Israeli line is that these are human shields. But how do we really know that for sure? Because all we know is what the Israelis are telling us at the moment. Right. Well, I think you hear what the Israelis are telling you, but as far as I've seen on BBC and CNN and other broadcasts, they're getting a lot of information flow also from Palestinians on the ground from UN workers, many of whom are Palestinians on the ground. I don't think the information coming out is pure as purely Israeli. I think we've seen video footage of it. We've got video footage from October 2007 where we see terrorists firing from another UN school into Israel, not even at the army, into Israeli towns. Um, we've seen footage of Palestinians um, carrying children across the uh, fire zone in a conflict, using them as human shields. And even in this conflict now, we're seeing Palestinian terrorists hiding in hospitals, dressing up as doctors to avoid being caught by um, the Israeli army. These kinds of things, it must be said, are against all kinds of human rights instruments the world over, Geneva Conventions, to launch attacks from civilian areas into civilian areas and so on. It's impossible to verify those reports, though. That, that, that Nobody can, at the moment, go in there and verify those independently. Those, those are, uh, that information is only coming from the one side. Right. Well, that's, uh, the Palestinians have said there were no terrorists there. Israel has the name of the terrorists who are in that building. We can see it. Even the Associated Press yesterday named those terrorists who were there. There are Palestinians on the ground who have said anonymously because, as the AP said yesterday, they're very afraid of reprisals against them by fellow Palestinians. They said... There were militants there. There were terrorists outside firing at the Israeli army. The Israeli army has video footage of such things. As a New Zealander living here in Israel, do, do you support this war? 
As a New Zealander, you know, I grew up in a very multicultural place, a country I'm very proud of. And uh, I am supportive of this war because I believe New Zealanders as well, and myself included, we're very strong on human rights, on the right of the citizen to freedom and liberty to live safely in this house. And I think when New Zealanders look at the situation, we should be saying Palestinians have a right to live in peace and Israelis have a right to live in peace. And we're looking now for the Palestinian leadership to take some sort of role in this and to say in a mature, in a democratic fashion, we will not allow our people to attack you. Please leave us to develop as a nation as well. But isn't the danger that those Palestinians will only be radicalised by this when they see their brothers and sisters, their mothers and fathers, grandparents dying from a rain of bombs and tank shells and artillery fire? Isn't that a danger? Certainly a danger there. But I think that what the world has to understand, and you're seeing that the world understands this, we've seen it from the Czech foreign minister, from the Americans, to some extent from the French and the British, people are sympathetic of Israel's situation. We're aware of the anger which it creates amongst Palestinians, but we're also starting to see anger on the Palestinian streets towards people like Khaled Mashal, the Palestinian leader who sits in Damascus, safe and warm, while encouraging his people to go out to war, and so on. There's a frustration at their own leadership as well. Israel is getting support from the West, but it's not getting support from the Arab world, and this is, the, this is your neighborhood. Right, and it's a, it's a difficult neighborhood. And uh, listen, you can't expect the Arab world or Muslim countries to come out in support of such a, such a campaign. On the other hand, you did have Egypt last week say openly, I believe the foreign minister, who said, why did Hamas give an excuse to Israel literally on a silver platter? People in the Arab world do recognize that Hamas has um, led problematically in Gaza, that it's led its own people to what is a real shame, a real tragedy. How close do you think we are to peace, to a ceasefire? Well, negotiations are going on at this moment. Israel's agreed in principle to continue discussing. Um, it's a long process. It's a difficult process. There's certain things that Israel, for, for example, will demand before they agree to a ceasefire. There has to be a mechanism to stop arms smuggling. We warned, many Israelis warned when we withdrew from Gaza that it would become Hamastan. We're all in Israel, most people are in favor of there being a Palestinian state, but not a Hamas state. So that has to stop the arms smuggling, the weapons coming from Iran, which is a great supporter of the extremist groups, uh, Islamic Jihad, Hamas, Hezbollah. That has to stop. Also, should Hamas be allowed to continue in government, or should we look to the more moderate, a Mahmoud Abbas and Fatah, to regain control so we can head down that peace track again? Those are questions. Uh, but surely it's up to the Palestinian people who they want to lead them. You're right, and this is one of the um, this has been one of the problems with uh, George Bush's uh, policy of uh, democratizing the Middle East. And uh, you know, he said we want to see a democratic election. The Palestinians elected Hamas, which is a problem. The question is, what can the West, what should the Western world be doing when a democratic government stands up and says, as Hamas does openly in its charter and orally as well, we seek the destruction of our neighbour? Can the Western world sit back and say, well, you were democratically elected, it's okay? I mean, Hitler in the beginning was also democratically elected, and that's something I think not to be forgotten. How much longer do you think this conflict will go on in Gaza? How much longer do we have? Very hard to say. It's got a lot to do with what the world can provide Israel in terms of security and on the other side, whether the world can satisfy Hamas's demands. Israel is going to keep on working to destroy the smuggling weapons tunnels and to try to um, destroy Hamas, Hamas's ability to attack Israel. Meantime, I think the official line yesterday was we will negotiate for a ceasefire while continuing our campaign. And that's the two-pronged approach at the moment. It could be it could be another week or so, I would say. They'll be going in to smash as much as they can before signing a piece of paper. I don't think as much as they can. I think they'll continue the policy of trying to avoid civilian deaths. I mean, we've seen Israel sending voicemail messages to thousands of Palestinian homes saying, you are in an area, your apartment building is being used by Hamas terrorists. We advise you to leave so you're not hurt. We don't wish to help hurt you. It's not as much as smash as much as you can, but rather get to a situation where Hamas understands 
that the West and the world can't accept rocket fire from one neighbouring entity to another. You're a New Zealander living in Israel. You've made your life here now. You're, you're married. You have three children. Do you think you will ever live in peace here? I hope so. We all hope so. Everyone on the political uh, scale, the wide political scale in Israel, wants peace. Few people have different ideas of how to do it. It's going to take time. It's about education. And there has to be a new education, I believe, amongst, especially amongst the Palestinians, where children don't grow up learning that um, suicide or bombings and so on are the only answer. If you look at history, the Palestinians have achieved much more through negotiation and re-education, especially in the 90s, much more than they have in the last 10 years through violence and attempts to destroy or disrupt Israeli life. Do you expect peace in your lifetime or your children's lifetime? Um, I would hope so. I would hope so. But we need to work hard. We need to work hard. We need to work very hard. Israelis need to be willing to open as much dialogue as possible while defending themselves and the Palestinians as well. We all need to compromise. I believe that the Palestinian people have not been taught yet that not everything, they will not get everything. The same way that Israel understands that they will not be able to hold on to most of the territories the way it looks. And uh, that's what it's up to, compromise, dialogue, education.